All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we have a really nice treat to review for you guys today. This is a fig called San Baggio. Um, it's a very rare Italian variety from Pomona Gardens in Italy. And this is a fig I've, had, I've really been after for a while. I'm so happy that I was able to obtain cuttings and start growing it uh, because it is one of the earlier varieties that exists. Uh, especially at Pomona Gardens, when Paolo Bologna announces that he has figs ready to be harvested at his, at his place, which, by the way, you can go and visit and stay, uh, pick figs, believe it or not, um, roam the grounds. It's just a really nice place to, uh, to visit in Italy. And so this is always in that, like, hey, we have figs ready post. You know, so if you go to his Facebook, his Instagram, and he's announcing basically in years past that the figs are ready, they're, we're starting to pick them, and he's talking about the different varieties that he has. San Baggio is always among those very early figs. And I can attest here, after having some experience with it, I mean, I think we've been growing this now for about four-ish, five years maybe, at least four years. And so it definitely ripens among the earliest figs, without a doubt. Um, is it super, super early? I don't know. But the point is, is that this is definitely in that category along with others that he grows there. Uh, it's pretty much the same story. You know, he talks about, along with this fig, figs like Pastelier, Ruccello de Elba. Those are really two favorites there. Uh, Vertolino. He has these other figs uh, called uh, Bosniaco which looks a bit like, to me, white Marseille. I'd love to grow it, though, uh, at some point. There's also Turka, his own version of Turka, not the other versions that you may find. Uh, I think Pons even has a Turka. Um, so there's really a, a nice array of figs that he has, by the way. He's got like four to 500 different varieties, and he, he's all really about preservation, and so when you have like a fig like this coming from his collection that's early, that of course looks very tasty, uh, it's you know such a gift to be able to grow this is my point. And so I thank him for at least sharing this with somebody and then somewhere down the line I was able to get it. So we've had this tree for about four or five years but I'm not really sure actually what I can really tell you guys about it beyond you know, what I'm about to actually eat and taste today for you guys. Uh, I can tell that the tree is probably lower in vigor. Uh, the branches are typically a bit thinner than other varieties. And so that's a good indicator of lower amounts of vigor. It doesn't get nearly as tall, this Daloso. The Smith behind you guys is 13, 14 feet right now. And so this uh, San Baggio, although it is, I would say, just as tall as some of these other ones, uh, the wood is a bit thinner. And so I would say the vigor is probably about medium to low. Um, I also probably could tell you that it can fruit in lower light conditions because a lot of these trees here really don't get enough light. Um, and so a lot of them are planted so close together. There is a lack of light here in this south the southern exposure in general. Um, and also because they're so close together, there is a lack of light going to each individual tree. And so a lot of these struggle to actually set their fruit buds because of that lack of light. The other thing that this is definitely combined with is, well, these trees either get cut back to six to 12 inches every year, or last year they got killed all by the cold. So because of that, and that heavy pruning that we do in the winter, um, not just the amount of the lack of light that we have, but because these trees now send up these really vigorous suckers from the base, we can definitely struggle to actually see good fruit set. The hormones are just totally out of balance. And so from dieback though, uh, and considering all the circumstances, it's actually one of the better figs that I have in this whole plot. Um, pretty much every year I've had it, it has put out figs to some degree. Um, now, of course, this is the only one I think I'll get this season. So not a whole lot to show for it. Last year, we got a couple figs to ripen. Didn't really get a great picture of what this variety tastes like and what it's really about. So I'm hoping now in the future, when we bend a lot of these branches over and cover them, plop them back up in the spring, when we 
protect these trees, we'll have a lot more success, I think, with this variety going forward. I have, I have no doubt. And really across the board with all these figs I have here uh, that are planted in the ground. So I'm looking forward to that, really being able to just break down this fig in a better sense. It's early, like I said, the vigor's you know, a little bit lower, has a better ability to set from dieback and also fruit in lower light conditions. And uh, so that's all I really know. I think the, the shape of the fig is a bit round or a bit flatter. It's small. Um, this one in particular looks a bit strange in terms of the skin color. Uh, this is more of a yellowish fig, but this one here is kind of semi-dried on the tree. The bottom has a little bit of an indent actually that goes upwards, kind of like the variety Nefiach. And um, the opposite of like Moro de Caneva. The eye is completely closed. The skin feels very soft and chewy. Like I imagine it's going to be chewy. There's a little bit of like furriness to the skin. And the pulp is an interesting red color. There's also a lot of seeds that are visible in here. Um, it's definitely uh, a variety, I would say, that has more visible seeds, at least, that I've noticed when looking at some of these figs. So I imagine it's going to have a better seed crunch. I don't know, but you can definitely see a lot of those seeds. Uh, and the skin is more along the lines of like something that's in between brown, green, and yellow. Um, very strange skin. And the pulp, as I mentioned, is like a different red. It's a different shade of red. It's like not exactly purple, um, but the redness in here is like... Um, it honestly, it, it looks like it's going to taste like a cherry. I mean, that's, I guess, the best I can come up with. Um, because it does have a cherry flavor. I, I find that the similar color to the pulp does usually correspond with the flavor, assuming it's not caprified. Uh, a fig that has a similar colored pulp is actually Hatib de Argentile, another one of my favorites. Um, Cavalier also has a similar colored pulp. And so these, I don't know what it is, the shade of red it is, maybe it's like a pinkish red they tend to have that cherry flavor, higher amounts of acidity, I imagine. And this one, again, very dried, or at least dried well. The pulp seems very thick. Let's try it. It's very good. Oh my God. So, this is a very well-balanced piece of fruit. I would say this one here in particular is quite sweet, but it's also rather acidic. It's got that cherry flavor, a nice berry flavor, good seed crunch. The skin, though, is a little bit bitter uh, because of the colder weather we have. Not overly bitter at all. It's a very, very good fig. In fact, I would put that among the best, the better tasting figs that you can grow here and are more suited for shorter season climates and uh, humid climates. That one's great. It may even taste slightly better than Hatib de Argentile, uh, which is saying something. That was very, very good. But also a lot of that I think has to do with the ripeness level. This is ripening after Hurricane Ian, so unfazed by the hurricane. However, um, it has been rather dry at the period of this time that the fig was ripening, but last night it did rain quite a bit. Um, and so a lot of figs actually got kind of spoiled last night. But this one is, uh, is a-okay. I don't know why that is. I don't know if that's going to continue. We need to really evaluate this fig's ability to handle the rain. Here is the leaf pattern. Very interesting, obviously. Uh, you could say kind of like a violet de Bordeaux without the, pet, like the, the reddish color there. Um, and it has more jagged edges to it. Uh, there's some others up here. This is obviously the, a very vigorous tree. So the leaf pattern may be different for you and you can see how it slightly changes there. And of course, some others, but I think that's the main leaf pattern. Um, again, and the wood is a bit thinner, I think, than others. So leading to that lower vigor, 
and see what I've got down here. This branch, I think I will bend over and the rest I'll probably prune. And so we'll have a bunch of cuttings to sell this winter. This is a really nice fig. Here's some other fruits higher up on the tree. Once the, the tree got a bit more light, was able to set more of these fruits. But it is just so dense in here. Um, I can't blame the tree for not setting a lot of fruit. Uh, but uh, I'm very excited for next season. I've always been very excited about this variety. This is a great win today. Today marks a nice, like, um, you know, addition to a fig that could do well in a climate like my own. And that also, by the way, is extremely tasty. That was very, very good. Um, so anyway, guys, that's the video. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. We've had so many changes over there. The website's looking great. There's a lot of traffic. People are really into it. I'm happy. Please go over there and check out the website. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. We'll catch you for the next one.